And so if you feel led to tonight, or if you've had to, uh, had a child or a grandchild or brother or sister pass too soon, it's a beautiful moment tonight at 7 p.m. local time to light your candle. Any other announcements before prayer concerns? I know it's so much, and that's why it's so important to carry your bulletins home to remember each of these events. As far as prayer concerns that I have listed from our first service, it says Kelly Dawson's brother Chris it will be having heart surgery. Uh, Kent had it. Oh, he had it. Oh, okay. So pray for his recovery. Uh, Kenneth uh, Linton, there we go, has pneumonia and is at. Uh, Skyline, and then of course all of those affected by the tornadoes this past uh, weekend. Anyone else to add to our list? Teresa Hefty, a neighbor of mine, was taken by ambulance last night. She does have COVID and was having difficulty breathing, and they did keep her. So we'll lift up Miss Teresa during this time when she was being evaluated at the hospital. And of course, we'll have our time of prayer here shortly in the service where we can lift up each of these names in our hearts and minds. Um, at this time, we will begin our service with the lighting of the Advent candles. together in anticipation of the arrival of our Messiah and King, the one who is our hope, our peace, and our joy. A reading from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. The highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. But only the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. Today we will first relight the candles of hope and peace. this the light of the third candle the candle of joy this candle symbolizes the great joy that is ours in christ he came to us to give us joy in the forgiveness of our sins he came to give us the joys of eternal life all of creation will rejoice when he returns and sets all things right let us pray jesus you are our joy in this season of advent lead us to see and perceive the joy that you bring in our Help us to seek you and find you in everyday moments so that we may come with hearts of gratitude to your manger. Amen. 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 What a blessing to have one of our newest members, our family, um, be lighting the Advent candle this year. It's so blessed to have you guys. Seriously, those babies are so beautiful. Thank you. Oh, we love them. All right, let's rejoice in worship this morning. Our hymn of praise, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, words will be up on the screen. But of course, if it goes wrong, it's 240 in our hymnals. Please stand as you are able. <laughs>
God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. and loving God, holy God, we come into this place today knowing that we are standing on holy ground because wherever you are present with us and your love and grace is, is among us, that is a holy place. We come today with great joy in our hearts knowing that we are redeemed and saved people through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are so blessed with so many gifts. We are getting ready to exchange gifts with one another during this season of Christmas. But might we remember today the true gifts that are ours year long, the gift of grace and hope and joy and love and peace that you bring to our lives. You came into the world, O Christ our Savior, to bring peace to our hearts. And so that brings us great joy today, to know that you love us so much and that your grace is always falling upon us in such a mighty way. How can we not offer you all honor and all praise today for being such a wonderful God. But in the midst of our time of sharing joy with one another, we also know that there are those today who, who need our prayers, who are suffering, who are hurting, who may not at times feel that joy. But we pray that the joy of Christ might be to each person that needs it today. We pray for those that have lost loved ones during this season and those that are remembering loved ones that have been lost in the past. We know that they are with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today, but we pray for them because we know their hearts are heavy. We pray for um, the organization of compassionate friends and the way they reach out to persons who have lost a child or a brother or a sister too early in life. And, and we pray for them today. We pray for the candles that will be lit today all over the world as the light of Christ will shine brightly through the candles that will be lit in memory of the special people. Oh, gracious God, how we thank you for the babies that we will recognize today. We thank you so much for the gift of new life, and we pray for each child that you would bless him or her, that you would 
help them to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that they would always know how much they are loved. Jesus, you were the lover of little children, and so we bless them today. And we pray for Thomas today as he is baptized. Just watch over this precious child, this beloved child of God. Just bless his family so much, and we're just so thankful that we can have a part in his life. God, I thank you today for the way that you're working in our world, but we know that there are many that need your healing touch today. And we call them by name today, Teresa, who is dealing with COVID, Kelly Dawson's brother, Chris, who's had surgery, and we just pray for, for your healing mercies to be with him, for Kenneth Blanton, who is dealing with pneumonia, and we understand that he's also had a stroke. Just offer uh, Holy Spirit your touch of, of grace upon their lives today, and just let them know that they are not alone, that you come as the Good Shepherd. And now, with great joy, we will continue in this time of worship. And may we leave this place today with joy in our hearts, ready to share that joy with others, so they too may know that Jesus is the light of the world. We ask all of these things in the name of Christ our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and as we forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
So would you like to present? So who are we have in here for baptism today? Mr. Thomas Porter Criswell. Thomas Porter Criswell is being presented for infant baptism today. Since the earliest times, the vows of Christian baptism have consisted first of the renunciation of all that is evil and then the profession of faith and loyalty to Christ. Parents and other sponsors reaffirm these vows for themselves and take on the responsibilities of sponsorship. Okay, you ready for these? On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you nurture Thomas Porter in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. Now, congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Yes, we do. And I ask you this, will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Thomas now before you in your care? Okay. There we go. Thank God. Help. Thank good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Thomas Porter with the community of love and forgiveness, that he may grow in his service to others. 
We will pray for him that he may be true to the disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Good job, church. <laughs> so we're going to have a thanksgiving over the water. Prepare this water. Consecrate it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very good Methodist. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and Thomas Porter who receives it to wash away the sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his entire life. And dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, for through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, we ready? I won't put my stuff over here because I'm ready to hold this baby. <laughs> Is this a special outfit? Yeah, yeah. it's the same one that all of us were baptized in. Oh, I love it. Charlotte was in it a couple months ago. I love ago. it. I love it. All right, you ready? I better get this I better get this going, right? Okay, let me get over here. Do y'all want to lay hands while I do this? You're welcome to. You want to come up here and take part in this? Are you ready? You ready? Okay, here we go. Thomas Porter, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thomas Porter, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Congregation, it is with great joy that we welcome our new brother, Thomas Porter, in Christ. And I would say this to you, members of the household of God, I commend Thomas to your love and care. I invite you to do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. And if you would respond, we give thanks, thanks for all, all that God, God has already given, given you. And, and we, we welcome, welcome you in the Christian love. love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in the congregation of Greenbrier United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully participation in the ministries of our church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, and in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Walking around, let's do it. Can I introduce you to the newest member of Greenbrier United Methodist Church, Thomas Porter Criswell? Let's give God some glory. How about that? Y'all want to see?
That's a good thing, right? <laughs> Look at this precious family up here just filling up the church. What a, what a glorious day. Amen. By the way, by the way, let's brag on God a minute. Thomas Porter Criswell is the 32nd new member of Great United Methodist Church this year. Praise Jesus. And we end with this beautiful benediction to Thomas and to all of you here. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Do we want to get a picture while everybody's up here? Can we do that, church? Okay. <laughs> Anybody going to take it? Okay, man. All right. <laughs> Also, the Sunday where we recognize babies' first Christmas, and so we have several babies in our in our midst uh, that we're going to recognize. And if they're not here, but their families are here, we've got some gifts for them. I want to mention those, Reverend. If you want to come down here and help me, um, you know, your baby's first Christmas is a special time, right? You hang a Christmas ornament on the Christmas tree. You teach them about traditions, and so we wanted to recognize this joyful time in the life of your, your baby, your child. Uh, thank you for bringing them to this church and for uh, just pouring into their life of faith. So we, we have uh, several babies that were born this year. It'll be their first Christmas. We have uh, Charlotte Williams from Duncan and Katie there. Uh, so we've got a present for her. And at 9 o'clock we have Charlie Doris, Jody and Sarah's. We have uh, Harper Laney. That's Brandon and Melissa's. So... We want to get that to Debbie. And we've got Thomas Criswell, who you just saw. Kevin and Catherine's. We've got uh, Lincoln Green. This is Michael and Aaron's baby. Anybody here for, for representing them today? And then we've got Harper Cullen. That's Rich and Kristen's. That's Dr. Sonia Bentley's granddaughter. And I see Dr. Bentley back here, so we'll get we'll get that to her. I'm sure she'll get it to the right place. Yeah. Are there any others? We do have some extras here. Is there anybody else that's got their baby's first Christmas that's here? Okay, well let's uh, let's bow for a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for babies, for new birth. Lord, what a healthy sign of, of the work that you're doing in through the Holy Spirit in this church that we have so many new babies, new births, babies first Christmas, babies getting baptized. Lord God, your grace is just surrounding us and enveloping us in your love. And so it being the, the day that we light the candle of joy, we are overjoyed and the good that you're doing in and through this, this church. So, Lord, just continue to just do what you do, to be you, and to just cover us in your grace and your mercy. And, Lord, may we as a church continue to pour into the lives of these young families as they bring their babies. And, Lord, as they grow up, we just pray, Lord, they grow up knowing that you love them and that they are part of this family. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Miss Jenny, there's so much on the list, I didn't even know what all we were doing today. <laughs>
By the way, Miss Jenny, while the children are coming down for children's sermon, I'm going to go ahead and come on through. This is a baptism certificate and a book and a card from Miss Jenny and I. We've got to get that way. I said that to the attorney. <laughs> Wow, there's so many y'all I can't get through. Hang on. <laughs> what a good problem to have. <laughs> wow. All right, guys. Wow. A lot of you guys here today. There's more kids than our presents, I know. So if you have opened one already in the last couple of Sundays, we we may share and let some other people open. Does that sound like a good idea, parents? Okay. Right. All right. So, all right. You're right here, right beside me. I'll let you open this one first for me. All right. Easy, Easy peasy. I actually saw this. Yes. Okay. So. No, I'm not a very good hider. But you know what? This is one of those we talked about a couple of weeks ago that we're reopening presents. So we're reopening a gift. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. This is the stable, and that's where baby Jesus was born. We, we, we're recycling gifts. Though. We're not re-gifting here. All right. So do I have another volunteer? That would, here, Delilah, will you open that one for me? It's also a, it's also kind of a re-gift, I guess you could say. So our first Sunday of Advent, that's right, you're really smart there. It's an angel. We talked about how the angel came to Zechariah. Last week, the angel came to Joseph. Today, Brother Jason is going to talk about this angel coming and talking to Mary, too. So we'll put the angel right there. I got any other volunteers? Anyone? Bo, you want to get one? You haven't done one, Bo. All right, there you go, Bo. You haven't done one. Open that one up for me. Yeah, pull. Yeah, it might be harder. There we go. All right, who is that? It's Joseph. And Brother Jason talked about Joseph last week. Mm -hmm. He talked, and we know that Joseph is the earthly father of Jesus. So let's put him right there. All right, now I've got two more. You wanna, you wanna open that one? You've had a big day. Oh, all right. <laughs> or not? Yeah, and I was gonna get Samuel open one too. Miss Catherine, if you'll let him open that one too. What's in there, Lucas? Oh, Lucas found the donkey. Lucas has got the donkey. Yes, we know that Mary rode into Bethlehem in a don on a donkey. And then I think that Samuel over there... Samuel has Mama. He has Mary. And that's who Brother Jason's going to talk about today. And he's going to talk about Mary, who was Jesus' mom. And he is going to talk to us about how faithful she was. Okay? So will you guys pray with me? All right? Dear God, thank you for this day. And thank you for Jesus. We love you, God. Amen. All right, guys. You did an awesome job helping me today. Thank you. I the said that in a word our scripture reading is from the gospel of luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38 in the sixth month of elizabeth's pregnancy god sent the angel gabriel to nazareth a town in galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named joseph a descendant of david the virgin's name was mary the angel went to her and said greetings you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with
with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will call, be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yes, amen. Thank you, Reverend Reed. It's good to have a partner up here. This <laughs> is so wonderful. Yeah, that's it. I was going to say that. But I did. You said it for me. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to be here. What a glorious morning it's been already, right? My goodness gracious. God is good all the time, right? And all the time? God is good. Okay, so today we're continuing in our sermon series, God With Us. It's an Advent sermon series. First week we talked about Zechariah and, and him being a skeptic. Second week we talked about Joseph, the dutiful, the duty that he had to perform or decided to perform because of his honor. And today we're going to talk about God being with Mary, the faithful. So we are going to talk about faith, but we're also going to talk about something that really is um, that goes right with faith, and that's God's grace. And what appropriate way to talk about God's grace on a day that we baptize an infant. So um, join me as, as we, I pray that the Holy Spirit works within anything that I say, that, 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 that He hides me behind the cross, and that the message comes through loud and clear into your spirits today, exactly what you need to hear from God. So today as we look at the, the tale of the Annunciation uh, which is what we call that, where the angel announces to Mary that she will give birth to Jesus. The, the uh, angel was Gabriel, and we know that uh, he visited Mary in uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. And um, we know that before she was the mother of Jesus, Mary was just a normal Jewish girl, Early teenage years likely, growing up in an insignificant little town called Nazareth. Just a few hundred people in that town back in those days. I've had the fortune to be able to travel to the Holy Land and see Nazareth. Now it's actually um, much larger, probably 100,000 people. We've, I've seen the, uh, the church over the historic site where uh, Mary's home would have been, where they think Mary's home was, where the Annunciation may have taken place. There's another site that's a well, the only freshwater well in Nazareth. So you've got one church tradition saying it's here, one saying it's over here. But it is a, a, it's a wonderful uh, time to be in Nazareth thinking about what all has happened. So, and by the way, that city is uh, mostly uh, Muslim. Uh, then there's a lot of Jewish population. Very few Christians in that city uh, today. So Mary was from a town of a few hundred people, maybe. And she was probably illiterate. And she was certainly poor. The scriptures really don't tell us much else about Mary other than she was a virgin and she was pledged to marry a man named Joseph. Now you all know some of this. The first thing though that the text really teaches us is that God comes to Mary really all in the midst of life, right? We're doing life together, aren't we? It's Christmas time. I've said a hundred times lately, people say, how you doing? I'm busy. You know, Christmas gets here and it's gone before you know it, right? Everything seems to stack up in December. Um, and, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here. But it, it's a glorious time, but it's also a busy time, and we're doing life. And in the midst of doing life, sometimes God shows up. But sometimes we're so busy doing life, we don't even know it. Or we don't pay attention to it. 
Well, here's the thing where God shows up. Mary has plans for her life. Don't you think she was thinking about this long engagement to Joseph? Don't you think she was thinking about how many kids we're going to have, what they're going to look like, what I'm going to name them, where we're going to live, what we're going to do for a living? She was making plans for life, and we do that, don't we? Don't we all do that? And then the angel shows up. The angel gave her right in the midst of her current reality. And the news she gets is going to change things. It's going to change her plans. It's going to change her life. But have you ever wondered, why does Mary get the honor of having a visit from an angel? What makes her so special? Now, there's a lot of church tradition about Mary, and there's a sort of a high view of Mary if you go to the Roman Catholic or the Orthodox tradition. Um, I'm going to preach Mary as just a little Jewish girl from a little backwater town called Nazareth, okay? That's the Mary that I, that I want to preach to you. I think nothing really made Mary any more special than the rest of us. She was just a normal Jewish girl from nowhere special. Yet Gabriel tells her she's highly favored. Say, the Lord is with you. You know, the root word for highly favored here comes from charis. comes from the same Greek root word for grace. Gabriel tells Mary that God is filling her with his grace. Grace is God's gift of blessings, God's gift of his favor and love that God freely gives just because he's God. There's no price to pay. There's nothing you can do to get it or earn it or pay it back. It's just simply given. All we can do is just choose to accept it. It's more than we deserve, and yet God freely gives it. And it's by God's grace that he created this world. Sometimes we pigeonhole grace into just one little thought. God's grace allows so much. God created this world because God chose to out of his grace. Gave us life out of his grace. Gives us salvation through the gift of his son, Jesus, by his grace. Y'all know the hymn Amazing Grace, right? We sing that all the time, but if you've ever really studied the words, and I know you know them, grace that saves us. It's grace that teaches us also to fear. Now that's not necessarily to be afraid, but to be in awe, to adore God. Proverbs 1-7 teaches us that holy adoration of God is what serves as the beginning of wisdom. It's also grace that relieves our fears. Think of the lyrics of this song. It gives us hope that God is with us and for us. God delivers us from dangers, toils, and snares, right? Grace has gotten us to where we are at this point in life. And if we trust in it, grace can lead us home to eternal life, to an abiding presence of God as we put our trust in Jesus. The one that scriptures have reminded us is full of grace and truth. God promises the goodness of God to us secures our hope that though we walk through the valley of the shadow of whatever you're going through, God is always and forever with us. And God offers us a life of joy and peace that's just the beginning. I love it. It says when we've been there 10,000 years, it's just starting. It's just beginning. Today, God says to Mary, you are highly favored graced with so much. But I want you to hear your own name here. Put your name here. Rejoice. You are highly favored. Graced by God, the Lord is with you. The scriptures tell that Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this was. Probably the angel had something to do with that troubling. You know, if a heavenly being just sort of shows up in your midst, that may cause you to have a little trouble, a little fear, a little uncertainty. And that's kind of how that's preached a lot of times. We often think about that troubling Mary, the appearance. But what about, what about maybe Mary doesn't feel worthy of the visit? Could that trouble Mary? Maybe she doesn't feel worthy of God's favor, of God's grace. Don't we have trouble hearing that God thinks so much of us that we too could be highly favored? I 
that we too can be given that much grace. But God, if you only knew who I really was, what I've done, God already knows. And yet grace shows up anyway, proudly announces that God finds favor in you. Will you allow yourself to hear it, church? God doesn't make junk. You know, you're good because you're made in God's image and God said so. I can show you the page. God is still good. Amen? Amen. And God's grace is still available to you. Whether you feel you deserve it or not. So don't be afraid. That's the message today. Receive it. So the angel calms Mary's fears and again says that she has found favor with God. Not because of who she is or what she did. She found God's favor because it wanted to be found. Did you know you already have God's grace? I love that we're preaching on God's grace as we baptize Thomas today. Infant baptism is one of the best ways we can understand God's grace. Do you think Thomas knows who God is yet? But God knows who Thomas is. Amen? Amen. And he's found favor with God just for being Thomas. And he will continue to find favor with God because God will give it to him all of his life. We're no different from Thomas. God gives grace before we even know who God is or who we are. Catherine and Kevin and all of Thomas's family and all of us have a responsibility to teach Thomas about God. But today we're saying that God already finds favor in him and in each of us just because it's grace. So we can look beyond our fears, our failures, the things we don't understand yet, the things that haven't come to pass yet, our eternal befores, our nows, our ever will be's, and see that all of us are very good in God's eyes. Yes, you are highly favored, greatly graced, given so much by the God of grace and glory. God is with us always and has been and always will be. God just wants us to realize it, to trust in it, and one day to discover it for ourselves that it's been waiting there all along. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, you know it. It's by grace that you have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing else. So have you found it? If not, it's still waiting for you. It's always available. It's kept and it's sealed. It's not going anywhere. But it'll take you everywhere. In the power and the love of God. God has a plan for Mary by His grace. Scripture says she will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call Him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give Him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Do y'all believe God <coughs> means what he says and says what he means? That he'll do what he says? That he's trustworthy and true? God's kingdom will never end. Believe it. <coughs> so Mary believes. That's the difference between her and Zechariah. Mary actually believes, but she has questions. Isn't that okay? It's okay. You can believe and still have questions. God's big enough for your questions. But God, I'm a virgin. How's this going to work? The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born. He will be called the Son of God. God's grace makes room for our questions, friends, for our doubts, for our fears, for our human frailties. When the, the mortal encounters the magnificent, the sounds too good to be true, goodness of God, the, the plans that seem way beyond what we can do or what we can dream or what we can hope for, God tells us how it will be done. The power of God will overshadow us. God will step in and God will make a way. This word overshadow, it doesn't mean God forces himself on you. It's the way the Bible describes God's nearness. In the Old Testament, 
The Israelites would gather around God's holy mountain and a cloud would uncover the whole top of the mountain and envelop them and, and bring them into the nearness of God, overshadowing the Israelites, covering them. You know this word overshadow is only used five times in the Bible? It's used once here. It's used three times in Matthew, Mark, and Luke as we're talking about the transfiguration. Similar story, right? We're on the mountain. Jesus is there. Three disciples. Moses and Elijah show up. God shows up. There's a gigantic cloud that envelops everybody and brings them into fellowship with God. Overshadowing. The final time this word is used is, is in Acts chapter 5. It's when Peter is walking around and people are laying sick people out in the street because when Peter walks by and casts a shadow and the shadow falls on the sick person by the power of the Holy Spirit, they are made well. Overshadowed. It wasn't Peter's shadow. It was God's shadow that was doing the overshadowing, allowing Peter to do those great things by the power of God. Overshadowing, including Enveloping, bringing in and enclosing us with God's grace. Mary would be overshadowed by God in a mighty way. And Jesus would come to be born in her. And that's the final message of the day. God is with us and that's so very important. But perhaps it's more important to ask this question. Is God within you? Because that's what matters. Not just walking beside, but taking up residence in you. The Christian song, Be Born in Me. It's a contemporary Christian song. I hope you've heard it. It tries to describe the events of what Mary might have thought or what it might have looked like. And Hear are these words. She said, everything inside me cries for order. Everything inside me wants to hide. Is this shadow an angel or a warrior? If God is pleased with me, why am I so terrified? Someone tell me I'm only dreaming. Someone help me see with heaven's eyes. And before my head agrees, my heart is on its knees, saying, holy is he, and blessed am I. What a response. Could we do that? You know, the angel tells her that even her a relative Elizabeth is going to have a child in her old age. And she's already in the sixth month says no word from God will ever fail. Or the more familiar wording is nothing is impossible with God. Do you believe that? I hope you believe that. Mary did. Not simply because the angel said Elizabeth was going to have a baby, but because Mary knew the God who overshadowed and hovered over the face of the deep and created order from chaos. The God that chose to make life. To make us possible. The God who parted the seas, who knocked down the walls of Jericho. Friends, God is who He says He is. He will do what He says He's going to do. God is compassionate. He Himself says He's gracious, slow to anger, quick to forgive, mercy, mighty, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God is able and makes the impossible possible. Can you see this story isn't just about Mary? It's God's message to us. God is saying, I love you. I am gracious unto you just because of who I am. I choose to highly favor you. And, and your ideas of feeling insignificant or undeserved, they, they, get that out of your head. I'm going to give my grace to you. Just take it by faith. God wants to overshadow you. Not to destroy you, but to make you all that you could be by His grace. If you'll just let it. God wants to be near you, surrounding you, and making His home within you. Will you faithfully agree to carry God's presence within you as Mary agreed to carry the Christ child within her? What better time to think about this? Do you have enough faith to answer God as Mary did? I'm the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. The last lyrics of the song Born in Me says, I'm not brave. I'll never be. The only thing my heart can offer is a vacancy. I'm just a girl. 
nothing more. But I'm willing. And I'm yours. That's where we got to be. Willing to let God be God in us. Even if it changes our plans, changes the directions of our life, causes some conflict or difficulty. Are you willing to let God step into your life? To allow God in is risky. Mary risked a lot. Did it make her life harder? Sure. But by her faith, her willingness to trust that God could do something impossible. And it was going to be okay. Even if we don't know in the midst of it. God's given the space to work in this world. To come into humanity and redeem it. God just needs a vacancy. Y'all remember when you go, used to drive and see the motels and the, the signs would flash? Vacancy, no vacancy. They'd light that no vacancy up and you'd have to keep driving because it didn't have a room, right? Some of you remember that. <laughs> Showing my age. <clears throat> you need to have your sign saying vacancy. Let it flash. Let God in there. God just needs a vacancy. Just a little room, a little faith, a little trust. That's all He needs from you. Because you're already highly favored by His grace. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Now, in real world, that's not a good idea, okay? <laughs> But you get the point. Mary didn't understand all that God was doing, but she trusted him enough to take that first step in faith and say, I am your servant, Lord. May your will be done in me. And you know what? Her son said that 33 years later in a garden, sweating drops of blood, laying across a stone, a slab in anguish, he said the same thing. This is a model of how God can accomplish great things, impossible things in and through each of us if we just have the faith like Mary, full of grace, to allow God to come into our hearts, to make a vacancy. Jesus wants to be born in each one of us, to come and make His home with us, to remind us that we are a product of God's grace, and to overshadow us and incorporate us into His family. God wants to change hearts and lives today. Do you have room for that? Will you make your heart available? Will you give it a vacancy? Will you make your heart like Bethlehem this Christmas? Do you have the faith to say, I'm willing, Lord, and I'm yours? <coughs> On this third Sunday of Advent, the day we light the candle of joy, may we remember... That through the grace of God and the faithfulness of Mary, we can forever sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. All it takes is a vacancy. I say these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen, Amen friends. As we conclude our worship service today, we have a, a hymn of invitation. So I want to give an invitation. The altar is open. Reverend Reed and I are here if you should desire to pray, to say yes to Jesus, to join with this church. Whatever your heart's telling you to do, I want you to mind the Spirit as we stand and sing our final hymn of invitation. What child is this? 298. <laughs>
going on today, and I hope you leave here filled with joy. Go forth from this place having a vacancy within your heart, having the faith of Mary to say, whatever you want in my life, Lord, I'll do it. And Lord, take that vacancy and with your spirit, show the world the light of Christ in us. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.